In this video, I'm going to explain how this is different from that. No, they're not the same. If you haven't touched a single Chinese Pokemon card in your life, well, time to wake up because there are two different types of Chinese Pokemon cards, traditional and simplified Chinese. In a nutshell, the text of one is, well, simpler than the other. No, you don't need to be able to read Chinese for you to know the differences, trust me. And that's why I'm making this video, so you can hopefully feel more confident or even be a master at distinguishing between traditional and simplified Chinese Pokemon cards. But to get some basics down, both languages of Pokemon cards are printed in Japan, hence why they have Japanese card quality, but they are distributed very differently. Simplified Chinese Pokemon cards are officially distributed in mainland China, and traditional Chinese Pokemon cards in Taiwan and Hong Kong. No, they are not the same, and if you have a problem with me saying that, please take that up with Pokemon, since I didn't decide to make Pokemon China, Pokemon Hong Kong, and Pokemon Taiwan separate entities. I will not get politics involved with the trading card game. So now, back on my first example. Let's observe these super sparkly Rayquaza VMAX special arts. Conveniently, I have one in simplified Chinese, and another in traditional Chinese, because I collect Rayquaza like that. With this card, don't even bother trying to look for the differences between Rayquaza's Chinese name, because sadly, there are no differences between the traditional and simplified names. But Crystal, I thought you said the text is more simple in simplified Chinese versus traditional. Yes, that is true. You'll see that in the rest of the card text, but that's besides my point. The real distinguishers will be three different factors. The year the card was printed in, the set numbering, and the presence of an extra logo, which Pokemon did a clever job with, by the way. Now let's break that down, starting with the year that the card was printed in. Now to fully grasp this, you have to understand that simplified and traditional Chinese Pokemon releases have two completely different timelines. The first ever simplified Chinese Pokemon card set, for example, released in 2022, whereas the first traditional Chinese Pokemon set released in the year 2000. Yes, that is a 22 year gap. Traditional Chinese Pokemon cards first came about as base set. Yes, THE base set printed by Wizards of the Coast. And this was during a time when Chinese Pokemon cards were printed in America not Japan. That's how you know it really was a different time. But how do we know that Chinese base set was in traditional Chinese? Because it was distributed in Taiwan as mentioned on the back of a Chinese base set pack. We then skip a few years later of no releases, and then Pokemon decides to release EX Legend Maker in traditional Chinese in the year 2006 during the Ruby and Sapphire era. Then fast forward again to 2019, we have our quote unquote Chinese revival sets, the All Stars Collection and Dreams Come True sets A and B for each. I have opened these during the earlier days of my YouTube channel, and some collectively call these the Chinese Hidden Fate sets, since they contain a lot of the shiny Pokemon that we've previously seen in the English set Hidden Fates. For those who only know 151 or Bay set, this is the chase card you should be paying attention to that everyone was after at the time, the shiny Charizard GX, in a way to revive the traditional Chinese cards, right? From this point on, Pokemon Taiwan and Hong Kong have stayed consistent with their Pokemon card releases. They would release unique sets up up until Astonishing Volt Tackle, part of Vivid Voltage in English. This is the point where traditional Chinese Pokemon releases have officially caught up with Japan. Today, Pokemon Taiwan and Hong Kong are consistently releasing Scarlet and Violet sets about a couple weeks after Japan. Sorry for the mini history lesson, but you see, that's explaining the key difference between traditional and simplified Chinese Pokemon cards. Pokemon China, or the simplified Chinese Pokemon card sets, have not yet caught up with Japan. As mentioned earlier, simplified Chinese Pokemon cards only came into existence in 2022, over two decades after traditional Chinese Pokemon cards, starting with the Sun and Moon era, not base set. Their first ever set is called Storming Emergence, which released as three sets, something you only see Pokemon China will ever do. Notice Pokemon Taiwan and Hong Kong would release no more than two sets at a time for their revival sets in the Sun and Moon era, set A and B. From this point on, Pokemon China will continue to release their own unique sets, typically in large mashup sets, similar to that of Pokemon Taiwan and Hong Kong's revival sets. At the time of making this video, Pokemon China are just reaching towards the end of the Sword and Shield era with a set called Dark Shadow Over the Blue Sea, which will contain a lot of cards from the English sets Lost Origin, Silver Tempest, and Crown Zenith. Now that we've played catch up with the timeline of both traditional Chinese and simplified Chinese Pokemon sets, it should make more sense to you as to why my traditional Chinese Rayquaza VMAX has the year 2021 on it, whereas my simplified Chinese Rayquaza VMAX has the year 2024 printed on it. Traditional Chinese Rayquaza VMAX released in Blue Sky Stream, the same as the Japanese version other than the language, whereas the simplified Chinese Rayquaza VMAX released in a set called Nine Colors Gathering set B. This is a set unique to mainland China only. Also notice the three year gap. Keep in mind it won't be like this forever. Once simplified Chinese Pokemon cards catch up with the rest of the world, traditional and Chinese Pokemon cards will likely share the same year on their cards at that point. 
If you can't keep timeline straight in your head though, don't worry, there is an easier option to distinguish between the two language cards. That is, looking at the card set number on the bottom left corner. The easiest way to tell the difference with this method is by looking at the letter at the end of the set number. The letter C will always be at the end of a simplified Chinese Pokemon card from mainland China. In this case, we can remember that C is for China. However, it gets a bit weird for the traditional Chinese Pokemon cards. Instead, the letter F, as in Frank, is used at the end of the card set number. Perhaps the best way to remember this is F for forgetful, ironically, because it's easy to forget that Taiwan and Hong Kong aren't part of China. Perhaps you also forgot to subscribe at the point of this video, if you found this information useful, of course. But yes, in summary, C for simplified Chinese, F for Taiwan and Hong Kong. Now, if that is still too hard to remember, there is another and even easier way to distinguish between a traditional and simplified Chinese Pokemon card. I previously mentioned the use of an extra logo by Pokemon, and in reality, the purpose of this was to help distinguish between real cards from counterfeit versions. Pokemon China took extra precaution more than anyone else in the world to put a textured logo on the bottom left corner and also on the right hand side of any of the holographic cards in simplified Chinese. The texturing is so complex on one of the logos logos that it alternates between a Pokeball and the actual Pokemon logo depending on how you angle the lighting. I don't think it'll be easy replicating that. Unfortunately, Pokemon Taiwan and Hong Kong haven't taken this measure for its traditional Chinese cards, but they may not need to do so since traditional Chinese Pokemon cards haven't reached the level of popularity that simplified Chinese Pokemon cards have. But again, to summarize, simplified Chinese Pokemon cards will have these logos, whereas traditional Chinese Pokemon cards will not. I know this information may be a lot at once, but if you hold a traditional and simplified Chinese Pokemon card side by side, it'll make a lot more sense in time. The more you look at the cards next to each other, the more you collect, the more you'll feel comfortable distinguishing the two, I promise. Just promise me that you won't forget that F is for Taiwan and Hong Kong. Be sure to like and subscribe for more multi-language Pokemon content!